It is brilliant, brilliant music. It's got a great sort of story feel about it. This piece has so much energy. If you don't know what's coming, then you could be in for a shock. The Firebird has been called on by the Prince to come and help him. This pattern that the bassoon plays is basically all the monsters and the creatures that have been whipped up into a complete frenzy. <laughs> Everything that we play is syncopated, so it's off that the main beat is going dum, 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 we're going dum, 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 dum. So it's all quite unsettled. Stravinsky uses very loud dynamics and very short notes as well, in the brass especially. This is the chance for us to really show a slightly uh, shorter, more percussive sound. Just the chance to play really very shortly and, and with great articulation is, is, is great fun. Suddenly, there's this incredibly tranquil section with a very gentle, cradled sound in the strings just supporting around the same sort of register as the bassoon. In the bursas, she has lulled him to sleep, and that is when um, Ivan can um, be led by the firebird to find the egg that holds Kashai's uh, soul. The bassoon line is very vocal and it meanders around in quite a small area, like I suppose many lullabies do. It's quite chromatic um, in the way that it's written, um, because I think it's supposed to be magical. Then as the bassoon melody develops, the violas have more of a supportive role, melodically speaking, with more, um, uh, more movement in the line, more expressive chromaticism than the ostinato chromaticism that was there before. For me, what's really interesting in this piece, um, in the Bursars, is the way that Stravinsky writes almost suspended. So the, you don't really have any sense of where the harmony is. So apart from the chromaticism, actually, you, you never really settle. This is the point where um, Prince Ivan opens the casket and he finds the egg, which he needs to destroy because the evil sorcerer Kashai and his immortality will go. The spell, the magic spell that's being held over everyone sort of breaks. The melody starts with the horn and it's one of the most beautiful moments in all music. The melody that you first of all hear in the French horn, very plainly, very beautiful, it's then passed around the orchestra. You could actually, I always thought that Stravinsky could finish it right there. When the strings finish playing the melody, the piece could end, really. But this is what makes Stravinsky so genius, is that he thought, actually, no, I'm going to make this, I'm going to change the, the melody and it's going to become much faster, the rhythm's going to change. This one melody that started with this one horn is spread throughout the orchestra and you hear this incredible growth towards the amazing climax that everyone sort of associates with the firebird. Finally the brass chorale finishes it at the end. It's just spectacular. The piece is so well known but this finale is just, is just incredible. I think every, everyone can love this music.